So in the last few videos we've seen what determinants are and uh, how to compute them. And if you've seen de determinants at all before, you may be confused because the definition I've given is maybe not the one you've seen before. Um, so I want to now rectify that by relating this to the maybe more standard definition um, that you maybe see for the first time of a determinant. Um, so with that in mind, um, let's see what it was that I said the determinant was. I said you pick something from every row in such a way that no two things are in the same column. Um, and then you multiply together the three things you've chosen or n things that you've chosen um, and stick a sign in front. So it's things like a11 from the first row, a22 from the second row and a33 from the third row. That will be a valid choice. a11 from the first row, uh, a23 from the second row and a32 from the second, uh, third row. Um, and that one will come with a minus sign and then uh, a12, a21, a2, uh, a33. That would be this guy, this guy, and this guy. Um, does that come with a plus or a minus? That corresponds, let's just think that corresponds to the permutation 2, 1, 3, um, and that is just obtained by switching 1 and 2. Um, so actually that comes with a minus sign. And then it's plus a1, 2, a2, 3, a3, 1. That's this guy, this guy, and this guy. And then there's some more terms. Uh, a1, 3, a2, 1, a3, 2, and a1, 3, a2, 2, a3, 1. This one comes with a minus, and this one with a plus. Now, we can group these into three sets of terms. The first group are the ones that contain a factor of a11, so where we picked an a11 as our first entry. So this is a11 times something. What's the something? It's a22, a33, minus a23, a32. And you'll notice this expression is exactly the determinant of this 2 by, two by 2 matrix at the bottom here. This set of terms here is a12 times a23, a31 minus a21, a33. And that is when we've picked a21 as our first row entry. And then this expression here, a23, a31 minus a21, a33, is the determinant of this submatrix. Right, a21, a23, a31, a33, but with a minus sign. Finally, um, I guess this this should probably be in blue. Oops. Now, finally, um, we get the terms with a one three as the first entry, and it's no surprise it's going to be this subdeterminant on the left hand side. Uh, that's a two one a three two minus a three. A, uh, sorry, A, uh, 2, 2, A, 3, 1. So when we group our determinant according to the choice of the first entry, the first row, um, we get an expansion of our determinant. So in general, the formula is this, debt A is a11 times the determinant of some submatrix C11 
minus A12 times the determinant of another submatrix C12 plus A13 times the determinant of another submatrix C13 etc minus A14 if it was a 4x4 four four matrix so let's say um, minus dot 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 and then the, the final term is going to be plus or minus A1n debt C1n and this plus or minus is going to depend on whether n is odd or even. So what is Cij? This is the matrix obtained by removing the ith row and the jth column. So this is the submatrix, the n minus 1 by n minus 1 submatrix obtained by removing row i and column j. And this makes sense because, okay, in all these cases, the i is 1, we're just removing row 1 because we've already chosen something in row 1, and we're removing row j, oh, sorry, column j, because we're not allowed to pick something in the column that we've already chosen from. So, for example, you know, a11, A12, A13, A21, A22, A23, A31, A32, A33. What would be the submatrix C12? Well, we have to remove row 1 and column 2, so we'd be left with a21, A23, A31, and A33, which is exactly the matrix I extracted over here, whose determinant, or minus its determinant, was the coefficient inside this term. Now, we kind of arbitrarily started by saying, okay, let's fix our choice in the first row and expand, but we could have fixed our choice in any of the rows and expanded around that row. And we'd have got a similar formula. So debt A equals A um, I1 debt C I1. And again, this is going to be plus or minus, and I'll say more about the signs in a minute. And minus or plus debt, uh, sorry, A I2 debt C I2, etc. Um, so this is debt A. And actually, you could do the same in each column, right? So, although I define the determinant by saying you, you make a choice from each row so that no two are in the same column. You could have equally said you make a choice from each column so that no two are in the same row. It's equivalent. And we get another formula by expanding in that way. So this would be, again, plus or minus, I'll say more about the signs, A um, 1J uh, debt C 1, J, then minus or plus, A, 2, J, debt, C, 2, J, etc. So this is now fixing the jth, this is expanding around or along, or actually down because it's a column, sorry, expanding down the jth column. And this one was expanding along the i row. Okay, let me talk about signs. In these formulae, um, you want to figure out what sign to put in front of the term aij debt cij. I'm going to tell you the answer. I'm not going to justify this or indeed either of these two formulae here. They're just a matter of grouping the terms and being very careful about signs. So let me just tell you the answer. 
So consider this matrix. Oops. Okay, and this is a four by four, but you could do n by n. The pattern is you start with a plus one, and then it's a minus one, plus one, minus one. And then the next row, it's minus one, plus one, minus one, plus one. And the next row, it's one, minus one, mi one, minus one, alternating. So the sign that you stick in front of aij debt cij is the ijth entry of this matrix. Let's check that for three by three matrices, this makes sense. So for three by three matrices, this is our matrix of signs. So we get A11 debt C11, because this is a plus in the 11 one one entry, and then minus A12 debt C12, because there's a minus sign here, and then plus a13 debt c13 because there's a, a plus one here. So rather than justify any of this mess with signs, which would be an absolute pain for everybody to watch, I'm just going to work through some examples. So um, example uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, that most imaginative of matrices. So let's compute the determinants of this using this cofactor expansion. So the, the debt CIJs with the signs are called the, the cofactors. So let's expand this just for fun along the, well, we'll do it two ways. We'll first do it across the first column. So, sorry, first row. So this is one times the determinant of this submatrix, five, six, eight, nine that's c11 and then minus two times debt of four six seven nine that's what we get by removing the top row in the second column and finally plus three debt four five seven eight which is what we get by removing the top row in the last column Okay, that's one times, well, this determinant here is five times nine minus six times eight. The next one is we're doing two times four times nine minus six times seven. And that all comes with a minus sign. And the last one is plus three times four times eight minus 5 times 7. So that's 45 minus 48, which is 3, minus 2 times 36 minus 42, and then plus 3 times 32 minus 35. Uh, so that's 2 times uh, 6, so that's minus, tw oh, sorry, minus minus 12. All right, we've got 36 minus 42 is minus 6, so minus 2 times minus 6 is plus 12, and then this is minus 9, 3 times minus 3. Overall, we get 15 minus 9, which is wrong. <laughs> this is a minus, minus 3. Yeah, okay. So this is 12 minus 12. This is 0. That's better. Let's do the same calculation, expanding around the first row. So we're going to get 1 times debt of five, six, eight, nine. And then four with a minus sign, so minus four, because it's in this entry 
here. So minus 4 times, well, what's the submatrix? If we take out this first column and the middle row, we're going to be left with uh, debt of 2, 3, 8, 9, and then plus 7 times debt of 2, 3, 5, 6. So that's, again, minus 3 is the first term, like it was uh, in the previous example should have been in the previous example and then minus 4 times 18 minus 24 and then plus 7 times uh, 12 minus 15 so this is minus 3 minus um, so that's minus 6 times minus 4 so that's plus 24 and 12 minus 15 is minus 3, so we get minus 21. And 24 minus 3 minus 21 is 0, which is the same, which is good, because that's what it should be. I'm just going to do one more example, otherwise it's going to get really boring for everyone, if it isn't already. Um, we're going to do the determinant of 1, 1, 2, 3... 0, 0, 4, 5, uh, minus 1, 2, 1, 1, 0, 0, 2, 3. And if we were to just expand along the top row, we'd have four different things to do because each of these numbers is non-zero. So rather than doing that, I'm going to expand down the second column. I mean, I could equally do the first column, or the second row, or the fourth row, but this second column is going to make the signs interesting, to say the least. So, um, if I expand down the, the second column, first entry is a 1, so I'm going to get 1 times debt of this matrix, so 0 minus 1. 0 and then 4 1 2 and then 3 1 uh, 5 1 3 and signs are interesting this comes with a minus sign because this first entry is in the second column and remember my matrix of signs is plus minus plus minus minus plus minus plus etc so this is a minus Okay, that's this entry, and now we also have a contribution from this entry, the other two are just zero, and again this comes with a minus because the next entry here is a minus. So this is minus two times debt of one zero zero two four two three five three. Just removing this row and this column. So let's do the red and the blue calculation separately. Um, the red calculation we get minus something. Oops. What is it? Well we can expand this red matrix about the first column as well and we just get one term which is minus minus one Think about the signs, right? It's this entry here, minus, times the determinant 4, 3, minus 5 times 2, 4 times 3, minus 5 times 2. And that's it, because everything else in that column is 0. And the blue, we're going to get minus 2 times something. Again, expanding this around the first column, we're going to get 1 times 4 times 3 minus 5 times 2. So we've got minus, minus, minus. So that's minus. And then 4 times 3 minus 5 times 2 is 12 minus 10. So that's 2. That's this first term. And then we have minus 2 times... 
4 times 3 minus 5 times 2, so that's times 2. So overall we get minus 6. Just as a final sanity check, I want to show that you get the same answer by using row operations. Um, so we want to put this matrix into echelon form. So I'm going to start by doing row 3 goes to row 3 plus row 1. This minus 1 is going to become uh, 0. This 2 is going to become a 3. This 1 is going to become a 3. And this one's going to become a 4. Next shortcut, I'm going to switch uh, row 3 and row 2. And I'm also going to switch uh, row 2 and row 4. Sorry, row 3 and row 4. What have I done here? I did uh, row 2 and row 3 switched, and then row 3 and row 4 switched. And this is not quite an echelon form, but if I now do row 4 goes to row 4 minus twice row 3, then this 4 becomes a 0. This 5 becomes a minus 1. And I've done two switches, so the sign overall has stayed the same, and the determinant hasn't changed with either of the other two row operations. So the determinant is now the product of the diagonal entries, which is 1 times 3 times 2 times minus 1, which is minus 6. Great.